Oma. Briar. Flynn. Kellogg. And I'm your DM, Ethan. Welcome to Venture Forth. Previously, you all had embarked on a wild prison break to free some of your friends and possible allies from a massive prison structure in Oak and Spire. You guys had formulated a plan and met up with a copper dragonborn by the name of Faraday, who used to work at the prison. And she was able to help you guys formulate this plan and figure out exactly how you guys were going to break your friends out of this prison. You guys had successfully gotten past the first two gates and into the prison structure itself. And once you were inside, you were confronted uh, by the face of the now warden Barrett Hastel, who you guys had seen previously on the docks. As you guys were able to move past and and sneak your way further and further into the prison, uh, you guys had actually made your way down to Timmy. And after some, uh, some acting on Timmy's part, you guys were able to convince the guards that Timmy in fact had dream rot and you had to call in Zeta to uh, come and help with that issue. As you guys ascended back up the elevator, though, you guys were confronted by the warden as he was alerted to your presence and he knew that he did not order an inspection team. A fight ensued and you guys uh, ended up banishing the warden for, for some time, but making your way down to Xavier and eventually rising back up more of a battle, and Xavier was able to actually teleport you guys out with the help of um, some supplies from Kellick and a feather from Shreya. As you guys uh, teleported out into uh, the open plains uh, outside of Oakenspire, you guys had realized that you guys probably are going to need to go back to uh, Hayfried. And uh, the only way to do that is to go back into the city and go to the teleportation circle. You guys said your goodbyes to Faraday, and you guys made your way back to uh, the teleportation circle, back to Hayfried's Void. So, you guys are still in Oakenspire. You haven't teleported back yet. Is there anything that you guys would like to do in Oakenspire before you actually make your way back to the Void? I'm running back. I'm running. I'm running with all of our supplies. That's right. Uh, (laughs) Oma, you are running back. You grabbed all of the... Almost all of the supplies? No, I, I put them all in the bag you of put holding. Everything I, in the bag of holding. I did right. grab Kellogg's second. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's a nice sickle, okay? <laughs> and I put it in the bag adequate. of holding and I threw the bag of holding over, plus my bag. I just grabbed all of our stuff that I could. Okay. I didn't put my bag in the bag of holding, though, because there's a dead head in it. So it's gross. That's right. Okay, so you uh, are currently, and you also have a bunch of uh, magical enchantments. I have so you many are enchantments. bounding over the uh, the rooftops. Yeah, I think as, I like, also used a key point. <laughs> yeah, room. for sure. Um, so you are running, and it's pretty much like one footstep per roof as you are like <laughs> nice. going over these roofs, and uh, you are moving at a fast enough pace. You know the city well enough uh, to where you successfully make your way back to the rest of the party. Okay, when I get back to my rooftop, if I don't see them, I'm gonna uh, on top of the shack. I'm gonna oh, yeah. s- I'm gonna hide on top of the rooftop until I see them. Okay, I'm gonna have you make a stealth check. Fourteen. A fourteen. Uh, can I get everyone's passive perceptions for me? When <laughs> <laughs> is a fifteen? Uh, Kalex is an eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> um, as you guys all walk right up to the shed, I, uh, <laughs> you guys see Oma's head clearly poking out from the top of the shed, like trying to be sneaky and looking at you guys. Uh, but you see her little eyes poking out from the top. Hey, Kellogg, where's where is Oma? Wait, what do you mean? She, oh, uh, yeah. I, I, want, I right. wonder if she's going to show up. Oh, boy, I hope Oma's doing all right. It's, it'd be a, a, a terrible shame if she were to be injured on her way back. Yeah, should try. Sure. Should we go back to the end to see if she's there? Maybe we should. Uh, I mean, can, can you guys see? I, I, <laughs> oh, uh, perhaps we might uh, 
endeavor to make uh, plans to save her from whatever doom has surely befallen right. yes, her. Yes, Shreya, as tired as we are, I think it's owed to Alma for all she's done for us. We can't that leave her behind. Let's go. No, um, certainly not. I pull my hood over my head and I like jump off the roof and I land in like a crouch behind them. And I say, I am here to take your souls. Whoa! <laughs> oh, who are you? Why oh, the starlight? <laughs> it can't be. I summon my sword. <laughs> it's just me, guys. Oh, standing oh. up. Oh. Oh, yes, Where'd you come from? I'm so sneaky. Yeah, you definitely are. All right, let's get in here before anyone I look around. I like Is anyone rope. looking at us? <laughs> As we're no. You guys are <laughs> next to this shed, you guys are completely hidden. You, this shed is like down a okay. dark alleyway. <laughs> Great. No, I, I, Perfect. I, I, I shrug <laughs> off the, um, the bag of holding and I hand it to Flynn. Cool. I'll, I'll grab my bag of holding. I'll uh, dole out stuff from ever, to everyone. I'll give everyone back their bags. I'll okay. put the bag of holding on. I'll put There's my, not faithful. <laughs> As I take my sickle and put it back on my belt. I'll put my equipment back on. I'll, I'll put my souvenir bag on and I'll actually go in my pocket and I'll grab the weapon receipt that I got from the prison and I will mm. place it in my souvenir pouch. <laughs> okay. Alright guys, um, should we go? Oh wait! And I'm gonna, my, fe- my feathers are gonna bristle up and I'm gonna like put my hands out. We mustn't just rush in, remember that they're levers and things. Oh right, um... But you'll remember what you need to do to... Oh, definitely. Oh, All right, right. Definitely, right. definitely, Design definitely. The, the trap. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Let's go! And I'll walk in. Okay. Um, once again, you see the platform on the ground uh, and three levers in front of you. I will walk up to it mm-hmm. confidently. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> As you do. Put my hand on the left lever mm-hmm. and look at it and like look back at. The group. I'm staying in the doorway. <laughs> okay. I have uh, at, at Flynn's display of confidence. I have stopped everybody, our, all of our adjoining uh, company mm-hmm. <laughs> at that door. <laughs> Okay. So everyone is outside a- <laughs> when you are inside. I, yeah, yeah, so I have my hand on the left lever. I look back at the group. I look back at the levers. I close my eyes and I pull down the left lever. Okay, you hear a click. <laughs> yeah, see, see guys, no, no problem at all. And I reach uh-huh. up to the middle one. Hmm. I put my hand on the right one. I think. I say to myself as I pull it. <laughs> I pull the right lever. You hear another click. <gasps> See, guys, no problem at all. And I reach up and I grab the center one and I pull it down. And you hear a final <laughs> click. The the floor opens up uh, to a familiar staircase. As thumbs uh, up to the group as I start <sighs> heading down. Whew. All right. Uh, yeah, Lynn. As you head Thanks. down, once again you see uh, this this glowing teleportation circle in the middle of the room still active. Uh, nothing has disturbed it since you guys were last here. As you guys step through. I, I look around at the party and I turn to Flynn and Kellick. Where's Faraday? Um, She went fishing. Oh. Yeah. At a time like this? Well, I think she's got some stuff to work out. Yeah. Oh. I think uh, raid in a prison uh for which she used to work, uh, maybe put her in something of a spin. Oh. It might be weighing on her. Well, I I hope she can open her tavern soon. I think the hundred gold we paid her probably <laughs> won't <laughs> help her much with that. Hmm. I mean, if we find a small enough town, perhaps. Also, the way she said I'm going fishing, I could tell that she's probably doing more than just going fishing. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Do you think she meant it figuratively? Maybe she's going fishing for, um, 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 monsters? Or compliments. Oh, oh. if she was going fishing for monsters, I would have went with her. Or like, fishing for, um... Fish? Hmm, but you just said maybe not. Well, but maybe she's trying to create a, her own, uh, what is the word, uh, you uh, you uh, organize the things that you'd like to bring to the general population, and then get. To, she was very interested in gold. I can't think of the word for this. Like a stall, like a like a cart. Oh, like yes. a selfish. Yes, yeah. yes, that's oh, right. Oh, you should have connected her to James. I, I, well, I, I, I palmed my head. But is, did we ever see James after? I don't think James likes us too much. Well, guys, I don't 
remember seeing him after we got him out. I guess we have no confirmation that James is uh, You should send him fine. a message. Right? We should probably ask him if he's yeah. alive. He's a fine fellow. We should should write we do that right now? Can you do that right now? <laughs> I, hey, by the way, I'm I just gonna to, look. I start to yeah. like sort through the, yeah. the, the, the tethers of ember in the sky. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna look back toward like the rest of the people who are kind of tagging along with us, and I'm gonna be like, "We'll be uh, through this soon. Uh, there's a there's a process. It's it's very complicated. We're working it out right now." Just All right, I almost forgot about that. And don't you, look. As you look, you you kind of see Timmy doing like that half step as he's kind of nudging towards the teleportation circle. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I I. I pluck a, a, a tether out of the air. I wrap yes. it in my palm. I pull it to my heart. <laughs> uh James. James, this is Kellick <laughs> from Addersfield. Uh, hope you're well. Just wanted to check in. How are you? And it, it takes a moment, but uh, you hear back, oh, <gasps> Uh, okay, look, I'm good. Um, uh, well, I'm doing better since the last time, uh, we talked. Uh, uh, my, my store is doing well, and, uh, um, my daughter just came back, and she's visiting. Uh, and you hear the message. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give a, give a Sweet. nod of affirmation. To He's the okay? Oh. Uh, he responded. He didn't, didn't sound oh. in pain. His yes. daughter's oh. visiting. So. Oh, He's alive! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Amazing how much a miracle that can be. Yeah. Truly. Well, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess we can go now. Share the portal. <laughs> Let's do it. I'll take one last look around. Uh, I believe this is where I got a book last time. Do I see un- any other paraphernalia of magic, the, the magic sort in here? Looking around, uh, you really don't. You were okay. even lucky to find that book that you found previously. No you look, there are a couple of bookshelves, but it's mostly cobwebs. Cool. I um, take a cobweb. No, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll step in. Let's go. Okay. Um, you guys all step in, and that familiar whoosh uh, comes <laughs> over you as <laughs> as you guys uh, open your eyes once more to this, uh, this inky black void and the platform surrounding you. It always catches me by surprise, even though I'm walking at first. Yeah, it's like we know it's coming, but it still gets. <sighs> hey, Freed! Hey. Hey. How does he look? Um, <laughs> he looks he looks pretty good. Okay. Hey. He looks decent. He's uh he's he, the last time you saw him, he was definitely looking exhausted mm-hmm. still, but now he's looking a little bit better. Um, could I look at uh, Xavier? Mm-hmm. I just want to see now that he's in this space. Does he look impressed? Does he look? Like this is something he can do or has done before. Like, where is his power level at? That's what I'm trying to figure. Make an insight check for me. While he's doing that, I'm just gonna have position myself next to Tito and try to guide him like calmly through the portal. And then okay. also, right now, just keep him from taking off. For sure. For sure. Um, I got a four, so I might have caught my eye on the demon or something. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, your the corner of your eye is definitely catching this, yeah. this sheep demon. Yeah. Um, oh, and from what you can see of Xavier, seems to be keeping a pretty okay. stoic presence. Right. Um, can't really read anything off of him. Shreya, though, I'm going to have you make an inside check for me. Uh, gladly. Oh, give me... Uh, is, uh, uh, insight uh, is going to be... Uh, why won't this reveal to me how <laughs> I'm able to... Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Um, Tito seems to be kind of moving back and forth. You can't quite tell which side of the line he's on, whether that is bewilderment or sheer panic, um, but definitely heightened emotions in this in this space. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, whistle sing um, perhaps something that I can vaguely remember from my earliest days alive. Uh, there, there seems to be a little bit of, of recognition there, um, mm. and maybe a little bit slower uh, breathing after that point. On oh, thank point. goodness! The last thing we want is for him to fuck with anything that's in this <laughs> in this void. <laughs> All right, and uh, as you guys um, fully apparate into this space, um, Hayfried waves his hand and motions for the the teleportation platform to come down and join with the main platform as you guys. Hey, Fried, I'm going to run over and give him a hug around the waist. Okay, and he 
hugs you <laughs> just the same. We did it! We're out! Everyone's here! Uh, I can see that. Um, I assume everything went well. Um, doesn't look like any of you are uh, dead. <gasps> um, everything went well, except in the middle of, like, trying to get Xavier, I think I accidentally um, made someone disappear for a little bit of time. They came back, though, and they seemed fine. Oh, that's awesome. I just don't really know what happened. Oh, that's that's amazing. Um, you don't know. you Like, you couldn't replicate that if you wanted to. Um, no, I don't think so. <sighs> okay, we're going to have to work on that. Didn't you also disappear yourself at one point in the alleyway? Yeah, but I have practiced that, actually. Because do you remember, like, way, way, way back when, like, when we first met and I disappeared for a little bit? Yeah. Well, I just spent a lot of time, like, thinking about that and practicing in my own head. And then it just kind of happened. That's good. Um, that's uh-huh. Good. Admirable. Now, um, back to the, the banishing part. Um, could Is you, that what like, it was? Could you, yeah. Could you show me, like, exactly what... And then Xavier immediately steps in and says, um, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have you take a step back. And uh, we're not going to be showing this man any uh, anything oh. that you had done as oh. far as banishing people. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, we can we can work on that independently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for now, I don't think we should jump into anything that he's suggesting you do. He helped us get you out. Well, I, I'm very appreciative of that, um, but I don't think banishing people is something we should be doing willy-nilly at this point. Oh, right. Well, that makes sense. It did help us in the moment, though. Yeah, um, it, I mean, it did help them in the moment, though, so it might help <laughs> if another, <laughs> another moment comes up. Um, it might help. No, um, I don't think we're going to be running into any of those moments anytime soon. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate uh, your help. Um, but that makes sense. No, no, that's probably probably not not good to do to everybody. Yeah, Alma, we'll we'll work on it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, Fred. Uh, I suppose it's worth introducing you to the Xavier here. He's the man you helped us uh, spring. Yeah, uh, seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, by the way, for for uh, sending Faraday our way. Hi. Oh, yeah. Um. I just happy coincidence that uh, I could do that for you. I I'll, uh, I assure you, she, as far as we know, uh, is doing fine. She she made it back from the oh, prison. Oh, that's good. Um, I, I assume she was. She goes off and she does her own thing a lot of the times. Um, so yeah, that's that's fantastic. I was I'm glad I could help. It was um, invaluable. We are a little bit less uh, lush at this point with the uh, well the. Golden colored resources, and I like open my thing and I reveal that I have like no gold. <laughs> yeah, when I say she was invaluable, uh, it there was it, a value, there was a value, <laughs> it, and it was heavy, it was a hefty <laughs> price. We haven't really done a lot of things that could earn us any kind of money. Um, hmm. Oh, I have a way to do that. We have to go back to Addersfield, though. And it's probably, uh, yeah, probably do for a check in with Melaru. Yeah, we should probably uh, I mean, tell her about yeah. everything that Speaking happened. Speaking of which, um, I've actually maybe got something that might be able to help um, all of you with that. Um, <laughs> and he he waves his hand and, and pulls down uh, one of the other platforms. And on that platform, you see uh, a, a very similar to a lot of the other platforms here, like a mess of tables and papers <laughs> and like um, just a, a real mess of a place. And he walks over to it and... Um, he, he walks over to the main table and you guys can see a huge map out on the table. And it is a map uh, similar to the one that Flynn has, actually, a map of the entirety of Elbor. And he has, you can see, circled certain points on the map. One of those points, very close to where you guys had teleported back in uh, in Oakenspire. And it seems that he has labeled a couple of the places on the map uh, where he knows his teleportation circles to be. Yay! Oh snap! And he says, um, "Let's go." That's awesome. So, um, I, I like with the one with Oakenspire. I I don't know the condition of um, the the teleportation circles, but um, you know I could try helping you out. There's a couple here. There's one in Addersfeld, if that's where you're looking to go. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if it's working or not. Um, um, that is so cool. I immediately start like scribbling out in my on my own like notebook, uh, like a rough sketch of the map. Where okay. do you know where it is? Um, yeah. So, uh, from what I understand and from what I know now, um, there's a portion of Addisfeld that's sort of abandoned, um, sort of like a whole corner of yeah. the city. Oh, is um, it kind of near a bakery? Maybe. There might be one there. <laughs> oh, I think um, we went to an abandoned part of Addersfeld. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so you would have probably been close. Yeah. There's a, a, a less well-off district there. <sighs> they do have some uniquely colored birds there, though. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, that's where it is. Right. Well, do you... I mean... We got a lot to do before that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had... <laughs> I've been kind of... One track minded up to this point. I feel uh, it's worth us taking a beat here to consider our next steps carefully. Yeah. Is there any way we can, like, maybe just all go somewhere and sit down for maybe some food and just talk? I mean, and he points up to one of his platforms that's got a little <laughs> kitchen that you guys had made some corn dishes on right, before. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, right. That's got some, like, a table and some chairs. Yeah. Let's. Can we go there? Yeah. Can you I mean, make one of your bridgey thingies? Sure. And he, he waves his hand and he brings it down and a uh, uh, stone bridge begins to apparate between the two. Man, you never have to leave here. Everything's here. Yeah, well, that's... Don't see sunlight, though. Uh, yeah, and uh, while we're doing introductions, um, hey, Fried, uh, this here uh, is uh, Timmy Flurd. Uh, and I sort of, like, present him... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while his, while his hands are still down by his hips, he sort of just raises one hand. We came upon him uh, in uh, unfortuitous circumstances. Uh, he uh, he was, was in prison. Well, but before that, even he was aboard. A, he was a, a, a very a handy helper aboard a, a ship, uh, but he misplaced his papers. And I'm sure you know that uh, that is quite the sin in uh, Oak Inspire. Yeah. So uh, why are you thinking Sienna's uh, life in prison isn't an apt punishment for such a crime that maybe you might need a hand around here so that this, you know, abyssal void doesn't become quite as lonely? Um, no offense, I say to the dragon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you hear... <laughs> 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 um, I mean, uh, that would be if if you're willing. Um, can you scrub floors? Um, yeah, I can. I can scrub floors. I mean, it doesn't sound any worse than what I was doing on the ship. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd love to be of service if I can. Whatever prevents him from indefinite imprisonment is his specialty. Yeah, um, I would like to never go back there again. Uh, that's <laughs> that's sort of my main main goal at this point. <laughs> Um, I guess, yeah. Uh, this place would be perfect for you then. Um, no one else is getting in or out besides company present. But, That's so um, cool. Maybe one day he can learn to help you with your statues. Maybe he can. That's a good idea. Well, um, Timmy, uh, I guess we should get started. And he sort of <laughs> takes oh. he takes Timmy and he, he walks him back to nice. the main platform nice. and uh, they both sit down and start having a conversation. Um, and did he already make the bridge to the... Yes. Great. Yes. So I'm going to, like, kind of usher. Come on, guys. And we'll go up to the, the table and sit down and kind of... <sighs> I'll give a give a sort of comforting nod to Zeta. <laughs> make sure she's, she's all good with everything going how's, on. How's Zeta look? I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have you make an insight check on Zeta. Okay. I'm going to look at the table and remember how he made corn and just say, I wonder how we make... Food, and I'm gonna look at the table, and I'm gonna say lemon pastry. And a couple of spoons bounce up from the countertop, no and a couple of, of bowls, and you can see some cabinets open, and um, like from an impossible space within, uh, like flour starts coming out, sugar starts coming out, and uh, lemon pastries are, are in the works. Uh, you don't have them right in front of you yet, but they are currently being made. What's um, that insight check on? Insight was uh, 16. 16. Um, 
you can see that she's sort of trying to emulate that stoic presence of Xavier, <laughs> but there's like there's something beneath that of whether it's possibly amazement at, at this place, mm. but she's trying to mask any sort of okay. emotions at this place. Does she does she seem like she's trying to find a way to get out of here? That's is she looking she's for She's not eyeing the exit. Okay. No. Hi, um I'm Oma. Hi, I'm Zeta. Um we heard about you from um like a little gnome and a bug. Oh, you guys met Ernest. Yeah, and he oh. told us about you. Well, I mean that's that's great to hear. I thought he was dead. Yeah, he Um, why did you huh? think he was dead? Well, he melted. Yeah, he melted for us too. I think he just does that. Okay. Wait. Um, so he oh. melted and then he melted came again. back and then melted again. He just no, he just melted once for me. Right, but he melted for us too. Presume how long was this a long time ago that he that uh, I mean no longer than it was probably a month? A month ago? He, so before we encountered him? Mm-hmm. So that means he had to have rematerialized. Uh, prior. Are we talking about the same I assume gnomes aren't just melting all over the gold uh, band over the head. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Big very, mm-hmm. uh, very cheery. He's <laughs> he's kind of going around and meeting lots of powerful people, which he told us you were super powerful, but then when we went to oh, find you for help, that's nice. yeah. But then when we went to find you for help, your temple seemed to think you were not very powerful. So what is it? Um, in my current state, well, former station, I assume now, um, it's not really proper to to exceed what you're told to do. Um, and you know, I'm very interested in in learning about. You know the 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 new gods, and I think I was progressing a little bit quicker than some people may have liked. Might have been some jealousy. Um, no, so I, is that why you were sent to prison? Well, I mean, it might have been. I mean, he melted right in front of me, so there was reason to believe that I killed him. <gasps> but I'd also just gotten back, um, so I, I don't know. So you were arrested for killing Ernest? Well, I don't know. That's they, they, they didn't tell me. They didn't they tell arrested you me why when they I got back. Arrested you? No. That prison truly is in a dire state. Well, you didn't kill Ernest. I mean, that's a weight off of my shoulders. Yeah, she seemed to have. He seems to uh, this melting. I don't know if it's an act or just a party trick or. Or what, but it seemed to happen rather unexpectedly. No, it's, it's okay, Cheeto, it's all right. Yes, um, but he also had a bug that I was very interested in talking to. Did he have the bug accompanying accompanying him the other time that you saw him as well? I didn't see a bug. Um, he rode in on, it was like this boar. Oh, interesting. Kind of on the smaller side. He befriends all types of creatures. Riding yeah. saddle. Yeah. Even better, <laughs> You said you're interested in the new gods. Yeah. Um, I take it that means you've come from some other means of worship? Um, uh, sort of. I was, uh, you know, many years ago, um, I was beginning to get introduced to the old gods, um, but never really, you know, never really stuck. And then uh, the new gods came around, and I, I immediately picked up on, you know, what Laetiel was doing, and I, I just fell right into it and You liked a it. party, too? It's great. It really is. I'm not going to lie about it. I, ju- I mean, it's it's not as much the party for me. Um, I, re- I just like the music, and the music really connects with me. Um, and that's that's sort of why I gravitated towards Laetiel. All of the new gods are great, really. Um, but it's, it's really the music that gets me. So... Forgive me if I'm praying, but how did you demonstrate uh, to this gnome that he gave you to us as a reference? Uh, what did you do that so impressed him? I, I, I didn't really even do anything. He just sort of came and 
asked me questions. He sort of, I, it seemed like he knew more about me than what I had told him. Um, it was it was kind of a strange interaction. I, I don't know if he talked to some of my friends or or some other people at the temple beforehand, but um, yeah, he was he was asking me about what I could do in a very specific way. What did he ask you? Well, he asked me about certain spells that I can cast. Um, he asked me about my my personal connection with Latiel and how that uh, sort of transferred through my body and out into the world and. Um, if there was anything that I could do that wasn't directly related to Latiel, um, to which I told him I can, I can pretty much attribute all of my magics to the, the worship of, of our goddess Latiel. But is, is he trying to find someone specific? It didn't seem like he was after someone specific because once, once I told him that all my magic was connected to, to Latiel, um, he seemed a little bit disappointed but he kept asking me questions so i assume he was more after the the knowledge of it than any one person in particular he does seem to keep records wherever he goes of everything that he encounters he is a very curious fellow it seems he did seem to know exactly who i was and and where i would be which was curious before he melted uh did you see him talking to something that wasn't there yeah, but I've 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 seen that before. Um, right. Sometimes people will have these servants that uh, that are created magically that not everyone can see. I assumed it was that was the case. For us, it sounded like he was bargaining with something. That it seemed like he didn't want to go just yet. It wasn't serving him that he was uh, beholden to it. It did seem like when I was talking to him, this I what I had assumed was an invisible presence um, was like kept interrupting and he, he he just wasn't happy that they kept interrupting which from my knowledge of, of any magically created servants um, they sort of just do what you tell them to they're not really the interrupting type so what are you gonna do now I don't I don't know exactly I mean and I, I sort of like <laughs> Raise my eyebrows to to Hayfried. This town doesn't have much of a temple. Uh, it's uh, presided over by a wayward wizard. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a, if there's an opening in that. Yeah, maybe maybe they could use a holy person. I I would be honored to create um, a temple. I I just. You might have to change your name though, and. You might have to change your looks a little bit. Um, I mean, how far does Oak and Spire's reach go that they would pursue you for uh, the melting of a gnome? Well, but we don't know if that's <laughs> why they pursued her or or why. Well, Did they say anything to you at all when they arrested you? Well, they seemed to be looking for me, but I had, I had just gotten back. I had, I had spent a week down at the Dakir ruins, and... Um, they were sort of waiting for me at the temple when I got back. And from there, no one really even said anything. Tiam, the Dakir ruins, are those in the, like, the waste area? Like, where are those? The Dakir ruins. Do we know, do, do, would I know where those are? Um, make a history check I'm for like me. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a 17? A 17. Um, yeah, so you would actually know that, um, they are directly south from Solaris. So when you guys um, left Solaris with Seeker, um, you guys had gone to the Bartok Rise, that, that mm-hmm. stretch of mountains in order to go up into the mountains. Um, but if when you are taking those mountains, uh, instead you walk sort of on the, the base on the left side, if you keep walking down and down and down, you'll get to the Dakir Ruins um, that are, yeah, sort of next to the waste. Is that where... Flynn was starting to walk towards? Yeah, so um, on the map, if you were traveling from Solaris, you guys went to yeah. the Bartok Rise, and instead of traveling up and into the mountains, if you sort of follow the base south, you will eventually get to the Dakir Ruins. Got it. Okay. Um, what were you doing in the Dakir Ruins? Um, well, actually, uh, Ernest has suggested that I go there. Um, 
telling me about uh, the new gods, and he said that, you know, there was more enlightenment to see there, and, and I might learn something, but um, wasn't really anything there, um, nothing for me, so I came back. You didn't Do see I anything? believe her? DM. Yeah. Yeah. Make an insight check. So I'm gonna say, Nothing in the ruins. Is... I'm going to say, I'm going to say, you didn't see anything? And so I, yeah. Yeah, uh, Oma, you can help out. Uh, for me, that's an 11. It is um, also an 11 for me. You can't tell the level of deception, but like she's shifting her eyes a little bit. Damn, that's a total of 22. Uh, okay. <laughs> Funny guy. Funny guy. He, he sent you there. What, for something of late years? Some kind of connection to her? Yeah, he wasn't super specific. He just said if I wanted to learn more about um, my faith and about late Tiel, that would be a good place to start. And, you know, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about this sort of stuff, so I decided to make a little trip and go. Uh, but but the Bartok Rise has stuff for the old gods. I was unaware of that. Was she unaware of that? <laughs> Make an insight check. Um, when they're talking about the wastes and stuff, could I um, go into my bag and bring out the book I found in the library? Yeah, for sure. 25. 25. She seems very honest. She did not come across any old god stuff in, in the Bartok Rise. Why would ruins have something of the new gods, right? That doesn't seem to track for me. I, I would like to pull that book out and just kind of like see if I can flip through and find anything about these ruins. Okay. Or about the waste and the ruins, something like that. Um, yeah. I'm going to have you make sure. just a straight-up intelligence check. Oh, right. A uh, total of 20. Total of 20. Um, the book that you got, which I believe was called... The Tragedy, the Tragedy of, Lost. of the Lost. Of the Lost. Um, of the Lost. So you flip through The Tragedy of the Lost, and... You don't see anything specifically mentioning Dakir ruins, and you're pretty confident about that, that the Dakir ruins um, or anything with the name Dakir in it, um, it's not jumping out at you immediately, but you are also just flipping through it in this moment. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Uh, um, I'm something of a... Uh, a convert myself. Uh, would there be any reason, any cause for me to go, or is it was it specifically Latiel? That no, um, no, there's no reason for you to go down there. I don't think um, there mm-hmm. didn't really seem to be anything. It's just kind of some old buildings fallen over, some stone structures, stuff like that. It was, I mean, it's ruins. Nothing too amazing. Did Ernest ever tell you what what the glory of what, what it once was? No, he didn't. He just said it was sort of a, a, a spiritual place for the new gods, um, but I didn't really pick up on anything when I was there. No extra energy or anything. I'd like. I'd like to see. I'd like to see the validity of that too. If if, if we're all gonna do it once and see how <laughs> see how. Okay, uh, now it's Shry's turn. All right, Shry. Right. Thank uh, you. Flynn will not Thank be doing you. this because <laughs> he's a gullible boy. <laughs> uh, which which check is that gonna be? Insight. Insight. Great. 21. 21. Um, she is definitely hiding something from you. She seems to be telling the truth, just not the whole truth. And I'm going to turn to the party in a kind of like slinking, shrugging way and just be like, well, no reason for us to go there then, all right? <laughs> as long as it doesn't uh, have have reason for you to be pursued beyond here, I, I, you know, it's no bother to me. Um, I should be out of seat. I, I suppose uh, the, the table over here will suffice. Avery? Yeah, take whatever table you want. All right. <clears throat> are the pastries ready to eat? <laughs> and just as yes. you are wondering that, uh, the nice smell of pastries uh, comes, and this, this floating plate comes over and sets itself down on the table. Chowing it down. I'm going to chew a little bit of it and then spit out some for Tito if he's interested, to, if he's hungry at all. Right, oh, yeah, he... he Takes it and he eats it right away. That's right, that's gross. gross. I, I don't, it's the only way I know that he'll eat, if he'll eat at all. And, and then I, oh yes, good, oh thank goodness. I just like hold a pastry up to Tito. Does he take it? He like, he sniffs it and he smells it and he sort of jerks his head away. I go and I chew some. <laughs> <laughs> like this. 
And I like hold my hand up. To him. And he looks at you directly in the eyes, and he just cocks his head to the side, <laughs> and it. has like a look of disgust. Did I do it wrong? No, yeah, that's fine. Actually, I'm a little extra hungry. Let me just take that. And I and I eat the part that you chewed. Okay, <laughs> I'm not hungry anymore, guys. Oh. I like sit back in my chair. Gross. I just I just look deeply quizzical at this. <laughs> I just look at this. With- with disdain. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, is there anything that we can eat that isn't sugary? I would very much like something uh, a little hard here. Yeah, you just have to ask for it. Ask what? Ask just the magic of this stare place. Stare at the table and ask for it. Well, that's that's all right. If there's are there are there cupboards? Uh, yes, there are cupboards. If I can, <laughs> if the kitchen will allow me to, I will dutifully prepare my own food. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> is there food in the cupboard? Um, yeah. you, you walk up and uh, you try to open up one of the cupboards and for just like <laughs> for a brief moment, you sort of feel like a little bit of resistance, nice. but then it opens up for you. Um, what is Kellett craving? Like not what would he nice. ask for, but what is he craving? Um, <laughs> some, some, um, what's the, what's the word for it? Uh, just some like mushroom soup, some like, Basic. That's such a Kellogg thing to See? eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, like a thing that decays. That's yeah. like so yeah. consumes decaying <laughs> things. Oh, buddy. What are you craving? Oh, mushroom soup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sadness. <laughs> uh, so you open up the cupboard after like the briefest moment of resistance and uh, you see the ingredients laid out there. You see some... Um, some mushrooms that are like just uh, just starting to get a little slimy uh-huh. um, and all of the ingredients that you would need to make the right, soup. I start to estimate them and then I'll go over and begin to wash them and, and uh, you know I'll get, a, I'll get a little I'll get some seasoning just a, just, just some Ooh, okay dangerous today <laughs> yeah, yeah living living <laughs> living on the edge you are making your soup hell yeah <laughs> um I'm gonna sit next to Xavier Xavier what happened um a lot of stuff happened. Uh, well, same. I mean, I, I mean, I. <laughs> yes. Touche. Um, I mean, if, where do you want me to start? Well, uh, we got to the Silver Shrine, and and then you were gone. You you were gonna go to the library, but 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 you never came back. And when I got back to the to the room, it was all trashed. Um. Yeah, so... Oh, gosh. Um, I had... You can call it a premonition, a vision. Um, I saw... Sort of the depth of your powers. And... It, I mean, it, it, it scared me. Um, I will admit to that. And I knew that I needed to, you know, find out where this came from and and the source of it. And at that point, I had my suspicions that there might be some people after us. Um, Evidently true by what you say, that the, the room was turned upside down. But... In my fear, I left. That's the that's the short of it. Um, I needed to find where your power came from and how we could better control it because I was, you know, I was putting a bandage on the issue, and there were there were some some deeper things that we needed to resolve, and so I made the decision to leave and to do it on my own and to hopefully take any attention that was on me away from you. And so I went up to the monastery and I talked with some of the monks there and, you know, there was recognition of who you were. But um, I spoke with some of them there and they were able to... um, Give me a, a description, however brief, of the woman who dropped you off. 
And uh, I, I couldn't find, they didn't tell me her name, um, as apparently she didn't give it up, but she was traveling with a, a young stable boy, Charles Bromwell. And just like that, they disappeared. And they were left with a baby girl with a necklace around her neck. And they had to take it from there. And and obviously, you know, growing up there, uh, what had happened after that. But I had to, to look further. And I was was able to, to trace this Charles Bromwell um, back to a, a farm in northern Caldor. And so, you know, pulling on the thread, I, I went to the farm, and fortunately I found Charles there, and him living with his family, having taken over the farm, and are alive and, and doing well. But there was no uh, no sign of the rest of your family. So you left? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I left. And you didn't tell me. You just let me think that you were hurt or, or injured or, or taken. I mean, for the most part, yes, I was, I was taken and I was captured. Um, I was in prison for that, that most part, but but yeah, I, I left. Why didn't you tell me? I could have gone with you. I could have helped. I didn't want to risk the people who were coming after me to, to find you. And I admittedly, mistakenly um, took your age and thought that I didn't want to put you in that danger. I didn't think you would be able to to handle the journey that we would go on. But I was all alone. And I felt that that was better for you than to come with me. I didn't have anyone. I, I, I admit to my mistakes. And the gods know that I had made many more before I met you, and I will make many more after, but... Yeah, that is that is one mistake I made was leaving you. And you went to Oaken Gate. Yeah. And you talked to them. I did. And you know everything. I do. Are you mad at me? No, of course I'm not mad at you. I mean, mistakes happen, and. Especially with someone like you who, you know, there's... If I had the gifts that you had, I would be doing far worse than you. As I'm cooking this soup, I am like 10% jubilantly jolly uh, soup cooking and 90% ears perked like Hmm. adherently listening to this conversation. Do do I pick up on that jubilation at all, by the way? Uh, (laughs) Just, uh, make yeah, a, is, it, is it, is it, is it uh, like, happy right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a little spark you can tell. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna like mosey on over to the area that he is in, um, assuming that I like saw him like his what he's been doing through some of this. Yes, yes, you have. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna reach into that cupboard. Um, what do I see in there? What are you thinking about? Uh, well, my primary thought is I want to feed Tito because he's like, he liked the lemon bar okay, Mm -hmm. but I I feel like maybe there's something that'll nourish him a little bit better. Okay. Um, you open up the cabinet and there is a heaping bowl of mountain goat, minced mountain goat meat. Oh my (laughs) God. (laughs) This is perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the bowl and I'm going to go over to the spice area that Caleb was that I'm, I'm just gonna like make it really salty and like spicy. Okay. 
All right. And then bring that back over, throw some of it in my mouth, chew it up, spit it out for Tito, see how he takes to it. And uh, with Xavier, Tito seems to enjoy it, but Xavier seeing this, uh, he sort of looks around at all of you and says, um, would I, would we just be able to get just a moment, please? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> As I take this soup off of the fire, I, I just take a look at Olma to see how she's doing, because I've had my back sort of turned. Um, what does Olma look like? Dejected. Um, her face is just kind of like downturned, and, and her shoulders are down. Uh, I look daggers at Xavier, and I say, it'll be right over there. And I take my soup. <laughs> <laughs> and I saunter uh, okay. across the platform. Shreya, how was that in? How was that in there? I, uh, I just opened the cabinet. It, it seemed to contain exactly what I was thinking about. Really? Yes, yes. I'll go over to a cabinet <laughs> and I'll think about ale. And I'll open the cabinet. <laughs> and there is a overflowing <laughs> cask of ale. Yes. <laughs> is it like a human sized one? So it's like super big. Were you thinking about a human sized one you that's super big? You better believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then yes, it is. Now I'll. I'll try to pick it up, uh, assumingly off the shelf, which is too high for me, and carry it as I nod to the to the two sitting at the table, Xavier okay. and Coleman. I'll walk away and join the group uh, on the follow, main platform. Follow Flynn, and and a little bit unwillingly, I'm just gonna like see if on my last way out I can hear any more about their, what their conversation is. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> then we'll see. The last paces, um, and as they leave, uh. Xavier sort of scoots his chair another like half inch towards Olma. I, I just, I cannot apologize enough. Um, I recognize my mistake. And I just, I hope you can forgive me. Are you going to do it again? I swear to you, I will never leave you again. You're allowed to leave and do your own thing. You just... You should have to tell me and not make me think that you're just like stolen and hurt or injured or dead. I promise. Okay. You're forgiven. Thank you. I will say, um, when I was at the farm, with uh, Charles, he said that the family had left the farm to him and after this woman had dropped you off, they completely disappeared and, and left all of their things. Fortunately, there was still a family ledger. Really? At the farmhouse, yes. There were some names, goes back a couple generations. Um, and some of them even, you know, left their their writings of, of their daily life and journals, diaries were left there. And do you still have them? I don't. All right. They're at the farm still, but I did read through some of them. You left them at the farm? So they're, they're not like taken by the prison or anything? No, they should still be there. Okay. So, through these diaries and, and this ledger, a, a family secret um, kept coming up. This this theme of something that had to be hidden. I can only assume, talking about your powers and, and the lineage there, but I did find names. Names? It seems that at least the names that were written down of your parents, Simon Bagney, and Clara Cross Bagney. Do you know if they're alive? I don't. I spoke with Charles. He didn't even know if they were alive. And they took me to the monastery? According to Charles, it wasn't them. Um, it was actually uh, your, your great-grandmother, Lady Alexandra. Lady? Yeah. Um, turns out you uh, descend from some nobility, but in the, the line of this hidden secret and the thing that must be kept a secret, um, 
it seems that that nobility had to be forfeit in the interest of, of keeping people quiet and under their you know, watchful eyes. They needed to be secretive. And from what Charles told me, it, it did seem that Alexandra was the woman who helped him take you up to the, the monastery. Did he tell you why? <sighs> he didn't know too much about why they took you up there, unfortunately. Um, from what he could could gather, the family seemed to be in some sort of a panic. Um, it did seem that that someone or a group of people were after them as well. And they had to, uh, in the interest of your safety, take you somewhere that they knew was safe. It was only after I, I learned that and got the name of Lady Alexandra. I knew she was, at that at some point, nobility, so there must be some sort of public record on her. I, I went to Solaris and began to look through some of the city archives to see if I could find anything further. Um, I traced her lineage back a few generations to uh, a, another woman named Cassandra. I was unable to find any more information besides that name. But as soon as I came upon this information, I was I was taken. The garrison of, of Solaris had trapped me, and, and in that library, they imprisoned me. Well, why? Did they tell you why? What'd you do? They never told me why. But what is Cassandra that they felt like they needed to arrest you because you were looking into her? I, I could not tell you. I don't like it here. Everyone's always getting arrested for nothing. nothing. Well, what was it for? Finding out information that someone doesn't want me to have. Well, and well, what information? Unfortunately, something about your family. What is it? I don't know. I couldn't go back far enough. I, I was So you didn't find into... it out, so why'd they arrest you? Perhaps I was getting close. And if I might share something. And he sort of looks around and sees that everyone else has dispersed. Um, oh. He says, um, that Zeta um, rubs me the wrong way. She's very clearly not telling you something about the Takir ruins. Um, I don't think that the guard of Oak Spire would arrest her for a no melting in front of her. She didn't have anything to do with that. She clearly didn't know anything about it. Well, but they arrested you for not really knowing anything either. And they arrested Timmy for nothing too, so we understand I trust you. And yeah, it's a little bit weird, but shrug, I shrug. <laughs> 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 okay, so we just pick up where we left off carefully. And if you're in the mood for it, we can um, actually pick up where we left off if you'd like to uh, meditate with me for a moment. And uh, I know we haven't really, you know held your powers down in a little bit but if you're interested we can see if we can tap back into it okay only if you're feeling up for it though yeah yeah okay. I think I can um it's been pretty good with everybody I think they help me they help me focus mm -hmm. um I mean most recent times not included but generally I also feel like I am a little stronger than I was. Of course. You know? Yeah. Can do a lot more stuff now. But I haven't meditated, like, at all. If you want to just take a couple minutes, we can... Mm -hmm. See if we can tap back mm -hmm. into it? Okay. All right. And he closes his eyes, and he begins breathing, and you recognize, you know, exactly what you had done 
dozens of times before in order to sort of calm down this wild inside of you? I start with just squeezing my eyes shut, like really, really hard, um, and breathe a little bit, and then eventually my eyes will relax. Okay. And um, over the course of the next couple minutes, everyone sees, uh, looks over at some point, and sees that uh, Olma and Xavier both have their eyes closed, and you can see Xavier taking her through this guided meditation, um, sort of uh, asking you to visualize certain things and to, to reach inside and, and take that power within you and grasp it and, and own it and control it. And after about 15 minutes of meditation, uh, you feel sort of like this this relief from with within you. Um, and you feel a greater grasp on your magic. So... In the next week of time, um, you may choose at any point, if a wild magic surge goes off, you may choose to instead have it not go off um, and have the wild magic counter reset to one. What? Uh, Once in the next week. And a condition of that, um, you have to fail the roll, you do not get to know the effect of the roll. You have to you have to specify mm-hmm. before you know, before before you know yeah. the effect of the mm-hmm. roll. But sometime in the next week, if your wild magic goes off, you can um, choose one time in order to negate that. Cool. While they're up there talking and I guess meditating, meditating for um, a while, <laughs> yeah. um, I'll, as I'm watching, um, <laughs> as I'm watching this gross soup and <laughs> grosser regurgitated wow. food. Yeah. I'm finding it hard to enjoy my beverage. Of course. <laughs> that I haven't, of course. Had, haven't had a beer in a while and this is not how I wanted to have my, <laughs> my first beer in the past however many days. So I will um, I will just kind of like, uh, I'm going to go for a walk and I would like to try and I've seen Hayfried summon platforms. I'm going to try and summon a platform. I'm just going to like look for the one where I don't know. There looks like there's a lot of pages or books or uh, bookshelves, and I'm gonna go try and spot one. Do I see anything like that? Um, yes, you do. Okay. So floating around, um, you've seen Hayfried pull it down before. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, as you raise your hand up, I'm gonna have you make oh. an Arcana check. Cool. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, you know. All right. Okay, that would be Oops. Arcana up. Total of 10. A total of 10. Okay, so um, you reach your hand up mm-hmm. and you close your eyes and you you hey. envision this platform coming down. Yeah. And you open your eyes yeah. and the platform is following your hand. Uh, okay. And then if I just... Uh, I don't know, maybe if I pull and I'll pull it towards me. And it comes pull my towards, hand towards me. <laughs> I look at my hands. Are my tattoos glowing? They're not. What, Kalik, what is your passive perception? 18. 18, and Shry, yours is a 17? Yes. Um, as this platform comes down uh-huh. and rests and the, the bridge apparates yeah. and connects, um, Shry and Kalik, you both see very <laughs> subtly yeah. Hayfried just sort of moving a couple of his fingers. As he's still talking to, to yeah, Timmy, yeah, yeah, yeah. just very <laughs> subtly yeah. moving yeah. a couple of his fingers <laughs> in the exact motion of the platform. I'll, I'll look down at my hands. Oh. No way. I gleefully look over to Shreya and just just have a have a, a, a quiet smile as I'm eating my soup. <laughs> I'll uh, happily stroll across the bridge and uh, just, affirmative squawk. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of do some browsing of. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I just know that I would want to find more stuff about magic, and it seems like since Hayfried's talking with. Timmy and, and the other magic person is talking with Olma. I'm just going to kind of like spend some time perusing until I see either, you know, Hayfried or Xavier open for conversation. So I'll look okay. maybe for more spells about abjuration, maybe evocation, I think. I, I think that might be what I'll look for. So any type of evocation books, because I now have this one book that's abjuration. Sure. So I'd like to look for one that's evocation. Okay. Um, make an arcana check for me. You got it. Man. Not, not not good rolls today, guys. Uh, Arcana is seven. Seven. Um, you're looking through these books. You yeah. keep getting distracted by the next book, the next book, <sighs> the next book. And that there's just so many of them. Um, you can't find anything specifically evocation. <sighs> Frustrated with this um, in between the aisles, I'm guessing. 
how like how big is this platform? Am I like lost in lost in a maze of? Book? You're definitely not lost in a maze. You at at pretty much all points you can still see okay. the main platform. Okay. Um, but you are sort of weaving in and out of these bookshelves. Yeah. I just like can't find anything. I'll just like look up and down, man. And I look back and I still see Hayfried and Xavier talking. It's like look back at the group that I could rejoin, which is still regurgitating food and, and slurping on yeah. some gross soup. And I'll just yeah. like ah. halfway down this massive beer, I take another big chug and kind of plop down in between the bookshelves and it's kind of go in my bag and pull out some books. I pull out the abjuration book, I pull out my spell book. And I remember. Hmm. I pull the adoration book out and I flip through the first few pages to the middle pages and I pause for a moment and smirk and flip to the last five pages okay um, alright I am going to have you make another arcana <laughs> check for me sure I'm not exhausted anymore so like I'll be fine right <laughs> yeah of course Okay, it's um twelve. Uh, twelve. Yeah. Looking through these, yeah, you see a couple pieces that you can pick out that you kind of recognize, but nothing like not like a complete page that you would know what to do with. Why do you say the extra side? Why do you say not to look at these? You do, from what you recognize, though, you do see that these seem to be um, instructions for some. Very powerful spells. Hmm. Well, okay, I thought someone was gonna jump out or something. This just seems confusing. <sighs> Shut it and uh, go back to my um, my iron like book with spells and just kind of like look at some of the more advanced stuff. And I'll just browse through stuff that that uses the evocation style of, of magic and sure. try to just read about that in between the, the shelves of books and just kind of like l- l- read until it seems like I can talk to Hayfried or Xavier. Okay. While he's doing this, um, I'll just look up at Shreya from my nearly depleted soup. And uh, I'll sort of cast a glance over at Oma now meditating and looking peaceful for the first time I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are your parents alive, Shreya? I uh, look over to Kellick and I you see my uh, wings tighten a little bit and my eyes uh, go a little uh, squint uh, and I look over at Tito uh, and then I look back at Kellick uh, and I say best not to trod that path just yet the short answer is I don't know and uh, I look back at, at Tito, uh, and I'm going to look really deeply into Tito's eyes, uh, remembering that, remembering his ignorance uh, the last time I tried to bring up where we are from and what we are of. Uh, how is he looking right now? Make an insight check for me. Uh, 16. 16. Um, with the food that he's got, uh, he looks remarkably better. Awesome. Okay, uh, I'm. I'm gonna look back at Kellick and 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 say. I am also um, interested and curious into, well, what your line of thinking is myself, if you don't mind. And I'm gonna look back over to Tito again. And it just, I look back again at Oma and Xavier. Strikes me, you know. Um, We've been hearing about this guy, Savior, for a, a while now. And the reverence, you know, with which uh, she speaked, she, excuse me, she spoke of him. The, the reverence with which she spoke of, of him, uh, he doesn't quite live up to expectations. Yes, he did seem quite revered. And uh, upon inspection, uh, it seems like a calm fellow. <laughs> I um just makes me think about parents, you know. Um, they are uh, something to us that 
They can never be to others. I think I find that uh, it seems to apply to people we revere. Once we see that what we revere in them can also turn astray when we perhaps least expected it. And I turn over to, I look over at Tito again, I look back at Kellick. Uh, have you found that in your travels? People you revere <laughs> suddenly turning astray? I think I have some pretty dead on examples to point to. That's right. Given the way that the Temple of Amir has undergone its changes. But I don't mean to pry. This, this man, Xavier, this temporary guardian, he uh, abandoned Ulma. Your parents, did they just watch as you were banished? Well, I... Uh... And uh, I look over to Tito, a little bit uncomfortable that, that Tito will hear this, but willing to go on with it anyway. Uh, as my as I kind of shift my weight a little bit back and forth. My family was, uh, well, let's just put it this way. We weren't uh, really permitted to be around each other all that much. And uh, I was, uh, let's just say even before I was banished, I spent a lot of time alone. As I, as, uh, as my feathers sort of rise up a little bit and I kind of put rest my head on them. I wasn't, uh, well, there was a strong interest in the tribe to, to keep members of my family apart. I'm sorry, Shire. Yes, well, so was I. And I look back, uh, I, I look back toward, uh, Toward Tito, does he seem to be registering any of this in in how I'm speaking to Kellick, or is his like level of comprehension like what does it seem to be his level of comprehension? Um, you pick out that uh, he it's probably the pace of the conversation that he's not keeping up. With. Um, ah, it's okay. Yeah, just uh. you can tell that. Common is still a very new language to him. Sure. And at this point in the conversation, he's sort of realized that you guys are talking a little too quick, so now I'm going to start tuning out. <laughs> gotcha. Um, this one over here, though, he is. And I, and I like, subtly, like, shrug toward him. Uh, I almost struggled to recognize him because I think I only ever saw him once, and he was more described to me in a likewise revered fashion, but I <laughs> I was never really permitted to gaze upon him very much. This one. Yes. <laughs> and I again uh, sort of motion subtly toward Tito. His reverence always such a deceptive emotion. Are we all simply fools to our heroes or simply fools to the different perceptions of that reverence <laughs> if I'm and I start I start thinking to myself <sighs> one tribe's reverence it seems turned out to be one Kaldurian civilization's reason for imprisonment <laughs> I hope your parents are alive Shai and I don't know <laughs> anything about her culture but I think I know enough of you that they probably thinking of you I would hope so and based on based on when I left I would be surprised if my home tribe is faring much better than the warring factions of this world and I look back over to, to Tito again and and, uh, and just give him a, a strong, like, heartfelt, yet, like, exasperated look. And if we are to curb the chaos of this world, then we may have to also curb our own delusions. As wild as they may be. 
if you don't mind, Kellick, uh, I would like to see if I can glean anything from my wayward, uh, young uh, fellow here. Of course. I don't mean to interrupt. You're welcome to stay here. It's just, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know if you'd be able to comprehend much unless you speak, uh, in the, have any familiarity with, uh, the tongue in which I originate from. <laughs> uh, from what I've gathered so far, it does not seem to be the case. But, uh, carry on, I'll try to glean what I can from context. <laughs> You're welcome to. <laughs> I empty the last contents of my soup and pour in the bowl <laughs> into my mouth. Gross. And I make, I, and I, but I try to do it discreetly <laughs> so as to keep up appearances. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Uh, I'm going to look at, I'm just going to start speaking to Tito in that, in that kind of, so you, you hear just like, <laughs> and you just hear these things, but I'm going to also then speak to him as best that I yeah, can. Yeah, okay. Um, what do you remember, Tito? Uh, uh, well, what brought you to that miserable place? <sighs> I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. I couldn't fly. There was no air. What do you remember before that? Before before they took you down into those depths? Why? What, what was the... What took you from... From our homeland and brought you there? Why? What was... What did you do? I just wanted to talk. I just wanted... I just wanted to talk to them. And speak... The spears were too heavy. I couldn't hold the spears. So I went to talk, and they took me. The spears were too heavy. Where? Who's... What? Why did... Why were you... Were you in a... Were you in conflict with someone? They took you away. But why... Were there others of our tribe around you when you were taken? No, I went alone. You went alone? Ugh. Father wanted me to to take a spear and go with the others and fight, but I couldn't. The spear was too heavy. So I decided to go on my own and ask them to stop, but they wouldn't. So I asked again, and they still wouldn't, and then they took me. <sighs> Sent you on a fool's errand. <laughs> they always... Seem, never seemed quite sure of what the right thing to do was. What was your last contact with them? Did they give you any instruction before you went out on your own? I, I went in the night. In the night? <laughs> I went in the night and I flew as far as I could, as far as my wings would take me. I... I know that feeling. But I left. When I left, I just wanted to get as far away from them as I could. I wasn't given as the depth of well wishes that I think you probably left with. <laughs> they did seem to revere you quite highly. I, I saw it in one of my dreams. They sent soldiers, so many soldiers. They sent men with swords and shields and bows and they killed the entire tribe, and I couldn't have that happen. You saw this in a dream? I saw it in all of my dreams. Every night, it wouldn't go away. Oh, this, oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, uh... Would I recall, uh, any conversations, like my last conversations with my, my tribesmen, uh, regarding regarding like Tito um, the nature of, of Tito's own abilities um, yes you had heard whisperings just in their rapid growth in in the increased acuity of his visions <laughs> it's not surprising then that they found you and took you. I... 
my first instinct would be to try to return you to them, but based on your dreams, I, I just clutch my uh, chest. I shudder to think if there's any tribe to go back to. And I uh, uh, just hold him for a moment uh, and just try to process everything he's saying to me. All right. So if you were to look over there within the preceding uh, minutes or so, you'd just see us like in, in, an, in an embrace, uh, trying to like uh, steady each other uh, through this like loss or grieving. I sort of look to where Flynn has gone off to, and then I look over to Hayfried. What's Hayfried up to? Besides indulging Flynn's uh, curiosity. <laughs> uh, you can see he's still in, in conversation with Timmy. Um, it uh-huh. seems like from what you can catch, it seems like he's almost doing a little interview of like, <laughs> what are you able to do? What are you willing to do? Uh-huh. Like, what's what's your level of commitment here? Um, but mm. he... Uh, Hayfried seems all for having Timmy as an assistant, and, and Timmy seems to be happy to uh, be interviewing for something. Yes. Timmy's a good sport. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'll look to Zeta. What do you think you will do now that you're old? Ah, well, I'm gonna have to pretty much figure my life out. Um, I would, I would assume that there's. You know, I, I I have to go back to a temple, but I would have to figure out a new name, a new identity, and then, you know, then, oh gosh, there's the whole deal with having to tell my family. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Her, yes, yes, yes. her, no. her eyes recede and go completely bloodshot as her head is thrown back and she begins chanting these, these guttural incantations and um, Flynn, as, as you look over towards yeah. immediately, uh, make uh, a, yeah. a, an eyeline towards the cage, you see the creature in there making the exact same muttering no noises. Um, and everyone else hears this. <laughs> but Flynn, you, no un- way. you understand what they're saying. <gasps> and they continue to chant over and over. In life and in death, I shall serve the outcast. As Zeta begins to rise up from the platform, that is where we're going to end this session. We're going to call it right there. What are you doing for summer vacation? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I'm serving the outcast, baby. (laughs) But we'll pick it up there next time. All right. Oh, my god! Thank you all so much for listening, and we can't wait to see you all again next week. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Bye, nerds. Hey, Ethan, uh, if, hey, someone like, if someone likes this podcast, what can they do? Uh, it's interesting that you ask, because what they could do is they could like it, uh, they could share it with all of their friends, share it on social media, and they could subscribe across pretty much all podcasting platforms. Wow. And, you know, I was on the channel recently. I saw you guys have almost 50 episodes. That's a lot. If it's someone, a lot. If someone wanted to catch up, what would they do? I'm so glad you asked because we have these incredible episodes called Harken Back. And uh, this guy who I just happen to know, Shane, uh, he takes uh, the the previous 10 episodes and sort of mashes together all of the the highlights, all the things that you need to know across those 10 episodes. So if you want a real quick way to catch up, we've got all those Harken Backs and each of them are only like 20 to 30 minutes. So you'd be able to catch up real quick. And where would we find those? Oh my gosh, you can find them pretty much everywhere that you can find the podcast. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can find them anywhere that you find the podcast, Russ. That's so exciting. I gotta jump and do it right now. You should. And you should too, guys. (laughs)